Welcome back. In the last couple of videos, we've been working with Taylor series expansion for a general function f of x. And we had found that with a Taylor series expansion, we can approximate an unusual function or any general function in terms of a polynomial. Now what we're doing in these videos is we're applying this, this Taylor series expansion for special functions, like e raised to the x power, or trigonome trigonometric functions. But we're doing the expansion about the point x is equal to zero. And when you expand a Taylor series about this point, we give it a special name, it's called the Maclaurin series. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to do the Maclaurin series expansion for, in this case, we're going to do f of x is equal to sine x. Now, as we had found before in the last video, the trick for applying a Taylor series is really just figuring out what these derivative terms are when they're evaluated at x is equal to zero. So before we actually plug anything in, let's just take a couple derivatives just to get that out of the way first. So here's our function, let me just rewrite that f of x is equal to sine x. Now we can take the first derivative, I'm just going to write it as f prime of x, that's equal to derivative of sine is e cosine, and we don't have to worry about the chain rule considering the only thing in the argument is just our variable x. Then we can take the second derivative, f double prime of x, that's just the derivative of cosine, which is the negative sine of x. Then we can do the third derivative, which is the derivative of negative sine, which is just going to be negative cosine of x. Then we can do the fourth derivative, I'm just going to write it like that, which is derivative of negative cosine, and if you notice we actually recover the sine. So it carries on, the higher derivatives carry on in this nice pattern. The fifth derivative will be derivative sine, which is just cosine. Sixth derivative will be negative sine. Seventh derivative will be negative cosine, and so on and so forth. It repeats really nicely. So now that we have all these derivative terms, let's plug them into our expansion, and we're going to evaluate these derivative terms at x is equal to zero. So let's just rewrite that down here. So let's say that our approximation f tilde of x, this is our approximation for sine of x, that's going to be equal to our original function evaluated at zero, which is just sine of zero, plus x over one factorial times the first derivative, which is just cosine, and we're evaluating cosine at zero. And then we're going to do plus x squared over 2 factorial times the second derivative, which is negative sine, evaluated at 0, plus, and then we can carry on with the third term, x cubed over 3 factorial times the third derivative, which will be negative cosine, evaluated at 0, and we can do higher order terms like x to the fourth over four factorial times the fourth derivative, which will just be sine evaluated at zero, plus x to the fifth over five factorial times fifth derivative, which will be just cosine at zero. And just to really stress this, I'm just going to do two more terms. I know it seems like a lot, but it'll really help see the pattern that will emerge. 6th derivative will be negative sine of 0 plus x to the 7th over 7 factorial times the 7th derivative, which will be negative cosine at 0. And then it goes on. The more terms you add to your approximation, the better the approximation will mimic the actual function. So now let's evaluate what these, well, actually before we evaluate, I just want to point out an interesting pattern. Notice that all the all the x to the like even terms, x to the zero power, x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, they're all paired with sine terms. 
And notice that all the odd x values, x to the first, x to the third, x to the fifth, x to the seventh, they're all paired with cosine values. And that all stems from this nice pattern when we took the derivative. Now, let's see what happens when we actually plug in the actual values for sine of zero and cosine of zero. Well, beforehand we know that sine of zero is equal to zero, and we know that cosine of zero is equal to one. So let's plug that in here. Here we have sine of zero, that's just zero. Cosine of zero, so this whole thing becomes one. Negative sine of zero, that's negative of a zero, it's still zero. Here we have negative times cosine zero, which is just negative one, then zero, then one, then zero, then negative one, and it repeats. So what are we left with? Let's just rewrite whatever we're left with. We're, we've got our approximation is equal to zero plus x over one factorial times one plus zero plus x cubed over three factorial times negative one. So I'm just gonna say minus x cubed over three factorial. Then our next term is a x to the fifth over five factorial and that's gonna be positive. Then x to the seventh over seven factorial and we're multiplying that by negative one, so minus and it goes on and on and on. And if you notice, you can see an interesting pattern. Because all the even func uh, powers of x were paired with the signs, and because the signs evaluated at zero are zero, we lost all the even powers of x. And we're only left with the odd ones. We've got one, three, five, seven, etc. So we can actually probably guess what the next few terms are going to be. They're probably going to be x to the ninth over nine factorial, then maybe an x to the eleventh over eleven factorial. But the other thing that I want to point out is look at the sign. The sign uh, changes each and every time. Here we have positive, here we have negative, here's positive, negative. And the reason that why that is because we had a positive cosine, then negative cosine, then positive cosine, then negative cosine. So we, could, we notice that the sine flips every time. So this will probably be positive x to the ninth over nine factorial, and then negative x to the eleventh over eleven factorial. In fact, we could probably rewrite this entire thing in terms of our nice compact series notation. We can say that our approximation is equal to the sum of our index n starting at zero, going all the way up to capital N. And now we want only, it's gonna be x over something factorial. And we only want the odd terms. Notice that our index n, that's gonna be equal to zero, one, two, three, all the way up to n. So this index can be even or odd. And we just want odd values though. So what we can do, notice that two times n, two times all of these values are gonna give us only even values. Zero, two, four, six, all the way up to two n. Well that's nice, but we want all the odd values. So what we can do is we can say that two n plus one will give us odd values. If these are all the even values, we just need to add one to turn them all odd. So here we're gonna start off with one, then if n is equal to one, it's one times two plus one, which is just three, then five, then seven, all the way up to two n plus one. And notice, these are the terms we want. One, three, five, seven, nine, etc. So in our compact series notation, we're gonna describe the exponent in the factorial in terms of uh, our index n, and we're gonna write it as 2n plus one in order to get all the odd powers. Now, we also need to keep track of the negative sign because the sign flips every time. Notice we start at n is equal to zero, and it's positive, then when n is equal to one, it's negative, then positive, then negative, then positive, then negative. 
So if we say that's negative 1 to the n, then if n is equal to 0, it's just going to be negative 1 to the 0, which is just 1. That's positive. When n is odd, it's just going to be negative. And when n's even, it's going to be positive. So this compact series notation will describe this whole, like, long polynomial. And this long polynomial is our approximation for sine of x. And to really, really hammer that in, I want to try and look at this graphically. So up here, I pulled up a graph of sine of x. Now what I want to try and do is, let's just plug in what, our, what we found our approximation to be and see how well that approximates our curve. And we're going to do it in a particular way. We're going to look at how our approximation improves term by term. So our first term in our approximation, that was just x over 1 factorial, or just x. So let's see what y is equal to x looks like. So here's our original sign, and here's our first order approximation, and you can see it kind of touches here and here. But this is a pretty poor approximation of sine of x. So let's add the next term. Let's say minus x cubed over 3 factorial. That looks a bit better. Here we have this nice curve here. Well, let's keep going. What happens if we add another term? Uh, plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Well, we're getting an even better approximation. It mimics the curve even more. And then let's just keep going. x to the seventh over 7 factorial gives us an even better approximation. Now, just to really emphasize this point, I have up and prepared our, ser our nice compact series notation. And I just really want to show that the more terms you add, the better and better and better that this will approximate not just the function around this point, but the whole function. So let's just zoom out for a sec. And let's just say that we're only going to start off with say, um, uh, get the mouse on there, five terms in our approximation. So we approximate that much. But let's say that we have ten terms, our ten terms in our polynomial approximation. Well, we approximate more and more of the actual sine graph. Well, what happens if we do twenty terms? Then we approximate even more. And what happens if we do 40 terms. We approximate more and more and more of the actual sine wave. And if you notice, let's just zoom in. This is a very good approximation of our, oops, zoom in a bit too much. It's a very good approximation of our sine graph. You can hardly tell that it's actually superimposed onto our sine wave. Now, here's the key point. Like in the last video, what if we have an infinite amount of terms? In terms of, like, this graph, that means it'll extend out, oops, it'll extend out infinitely far, which means it can approximate the entire function. So we say that we can, uh, we can say that the sine of x is equal to the infinite sum, n is equal to 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. That's just this expression here stretched out all the way to infinity. And we found that that pretty much is equal, if you go all the way to infinity, to our sine of x. Now, that's pretty neat. We're able to represent what we thought was a fairly unusual function that oscillates back and forth in terms of just a very, very infinitely long polynomial. But you wouldn't normally think of a polynomial as like this oscillation. So that was pretty cool. And this will have even more interesting ramifications in later videos. But for now, let's just continue applying this Taylor series expansion to more functions. So I'll hopefully see you in the next video.